everybody, buddy. Welcome to CN Live. Uh, Colin Noir is not here today. I am. I'm his uh, sit-in replacement, Bill Whittle. And uh, I've got actually a little more scenic pic background for us back there. Let me look at something beautiful like uh, like that. Uh, Colin's out for the week. He'll be back on. Um, he'll be back next week, I think. And right now, I'm sitting in from Los Angeles. I'm Bill Whittle from BillWhittle.com, and we have an incredible show today. You know, it's it's there's so much gloom and doom out there. It's almost. Um, We've almost forgotten, I think, how to celebrate and how to and how to just sit back in in awe and wonder. Um, I don't want to get too effusive about this, but but I thought Donald Trump's speech uh, last night was was remarkable. And apparently, um, I'm not the only one. Uh, why don't we listen to a couple of, of bits just to get a feel for it? I'm sure most of you listened to it, but if you didn't, then um, this will give you a couple of ideas that we can tee off of. And then we'll come back and, and talk to our first guest, uh, Stephen Gutowski, um, and we'll see what he has to say about it, too, maybe what the word is inside of Washington. So, hey, guys, can we roll that, uh, that first Donald Trump clip for us? To protect our citizens, I have directed the Department of Justice to form a task force on reducing violent crime. I have further ordered the Departments of Homeland Security and Justice, along with the Department of State and the Director of National Intelligence, to coordinate an aggressive strategy to dismantle the criminal cartels that have spread all across our nation. We will stop the drugs from pouring into our country and poisoning our youth, and we will expand treatment for those who have become so badly addicted and we will soon begin the construction of a great, great wall along our southern border. Our obligation is to serve, protect, and defend the citizens of the United States. We are also taking strong measures to protect our nation from radical Islamic terrorism. That is why my administration has been working on improved vetting procedures and we will shortly take new steps to keep our nation safe and to keep those out who will do us harm. I believe that real and positive immigration reform is possible as long as we focus on the following goals. To improve jobs and wages for Americans. To strengthen our nation's security. And to restore respect for our laws. Tonight, I am also calling on this Congress to repeal and replace Obamacare. <laughs> With reforms that expand choice, increase access, lower costs, and at the same time provide better health care. That was a remarkable speech. Even the two minutes of it were uh, remarkable. I think the thing that struck me the most, and I'm sure uh, this is probably what most people were thinking, was that um, Donald Trump, first of all, came off a lot more polished than many of his detractors thought he might be. He became a, a lot more conciliatory than I think a lot of his detractors thought he might be. But the thing to me that was remarkable about that speech, really quite astonishing, was how how tough it was and at the same time how compassionate and sympathetic it, it sounded. Donald Trump stoke, uh took a whole new tone on this speech. Um, this idea that he lead it off, he led off rather with the idea of um, Black History Month and talking about the problems with the inner cities and so on. This is just really, really smart messaging because what he's basically doing is from the very beginning, from the beginning of the speech, he's taking the Democrats' talking points and he's owning them. He's taken away from them. He's basically robbing them of their ammunition. Uh, and I thought it was done elegantly and um, and and very, very uh, cleverly. Let's just go to one more uh, clip and then we'll come back get a little bit of uh, some of the press uh, reaction. Then we'll, we'll talk to our first guest, uh, Stephen. People turned out by the tens of millions and they were all united by one very simple but crucial demand that America must put its own citizens first, because only then can we truly make America great again. <laughs> Crumbling infrastructure will be replaced with new roads, bridges, tunnels, airports, and railways gleaming across our very, very beautiful land. Our terrible drug epidemic will slow down and ultimately stop and our neglected inner cities 
will see a rebirth of hope, safety, and opportunity. Above all else, we will keep our promises to the American people. We have undertaken a historic effort to massively reduce job-crushing regulations, creating a deregulation task force inside of every government agency. We have cleared the way for the construction of the Keystone and Dakota Access Pipelines. thereby creating tens of thousands of jobs. And I've issued a new directive that new American pipelines be made with American steel. We have formed a council with our neighbors in Canada to help ensure that women entrepreneurs have access to the networks, markets, and capital they need to start a business and live out their financial dreams. You know, the, um, the Chinese um, philosopher and historian uh, Sun Tzu wrote an awful lot about warfare. He said the ultimate form of the warrior, the ultimate warrior, is somebody who can go unarmed into the enemy camp and steal their weapons. He called it swordlessness. And that's exactly what Donald Trump has done here, I think. Uh, as he said, we, he opened the speech talking about uh, Black History Month, made constant references to the inner cities, he makes a speech there, as you just heard, a little soundbite there saying that um, we need to get women the capital they need to, to get their businesses started and get their dreams um, on the way to becoming true. This is just smart politics. But it was, to me, it was more than that. This was perhaps the most uniformly optimistic speech I've heard in my lifetime, uh, and certainly the most optimistic speech I've heard in 20 minutes. Um, and, and it's got all of uh, Washington uh, upside down. We're going to come back to some of the other um, headlines uh, on Washington, some of the other reactions to it uh, after the break. So right now, let's get our, our friend uh, Stephen Gutowski in. Uh, Stephen's a writer from the uh, Washington Free Beacon. And uh, Stephen, um, I don't know. It's uh, I'm seeing a lot of headlines out there and a lot of blog comments and stuff that said this was pretty revolutionary. Do you think do you think that's true or do you think it was just a, a above average speech for Donald Trump? Uh, well, I think for Donald Trump, it was certainly the best speech that I've seen him give uh, in his political career. Right. I mean, it came across uh, as as very presidential. I think there are people across the spectrum have said that um, in reaction. So, you know, certainly going from uh, the political climate before this joint speech or the speech to a joint session of con Congress mm -hmm. to after, uh, you know, it, it had a pretty radical impact. What was it about it that you found most striking? Was there was there any particular moment or any of the points that he hit that just leapt out at you? There were a couple of moments there oh. when I went, wow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the most presidential moment we've seen from Donald Trump so far happened in the speech, which was uh, when he took the time to to recognize uh, the wife of the, of the SEAL who passed away in um, the military action in, in Libya. I mean, th that moment, those uh, two or three minutes were were really, you know, heartbreaking. And, and uh, I think from uh, a perspective of what a president should do, that's what a president should do. Categorically, um, you know, one of the one of the things that the Democrats had always been so good at was personalizing the news. Uh, when Obama was trying to pitch Obamacare, he didn't talk so much about the benefits so much as he would just point to somebody up in the gallery. And when you see an actual individual, you see a person's face, uh, it it humanizes the entire point, and it and it makes us realize that this these these people that are out there on the on the walls of the city are actual people with actual families, and. This kind of goes in line to a, a theme I've seen throughout Donald Trump's first month or two. Uh, and I was wondering if you picked up on this too, Stephen. Do you think that, that Donald Trump is not, o is not only more sympathetic perhaps to law enforcement than his predecessor, but he seems to have a genuine, honest to goodness, soft spot, uh, soft spot and deep respect for people in both the military and in law enforcement? Yeah, I'd say that's fair to say of, of Donald Trump. And it's certainly been something that he's made a point in his uh, both in the campaign and after he's become president. Um, and I, I think, uh, you know, what happened last night uh, when he when he was honoring that fallen seal w was something that transcends partisanship, really. Um, it transcends, uh, you know, politics altogether, really. Uh, that That's what I felt when I when I was watching it, because, you know, it's, it's here is 
Donald Trump, President Trump, and he's he's pointing out someone who is the best of what America represents, someone who gave their all for for this country, and he's doing it in a way that uh, I, I think was was very respectful um, and moving. Well, um, when Donald Trump was elected that night, um, it seemed like there was a giant fissure opened up right down the middle of the mall in Washington, and you could just hear people screaming as they fell in. You know, the, the city of Washington, which was obviously pretty democratic and, and, and tends to generally run pretty liberal, they were having an absolute um, meltdown on the night of the election. And then um, ever since he's been elected, uh, been the nominee, I'm sorry, the um, president-elect, and then since his inauguration, uh, Washington, D.C. establishment has not been very kind towards Donald Trump. Do you think, being in, in that D.C. establishment, did you get any sense that maybe he changed some minds today? Um, yeah, you know what I think, uh, what, I, what I think I, I see from reaction is, is mainly, you know, they want to see more of this kind of Donald Trump, right? The, the speech that he delivered last night, that's the type of tone they want from him. Um, <clears throat> obviously, in the past, uh, Trump, Trump's going to be himself. Um, and whether or not he uh, last night represented a shift in how he chooses to treat big speeches like this or um, whatever, I mean, I, I certainly think that a lot of people like Mitch McConnell or, or Speaker Ryan or, or other uh, elected officials, well, that's what they want to see. Whether or not that's going to be what we get going forward is, you know, it's, it's really up to Donald Trump himself. Um, so, And just like last night was, and, and he did something that I think a lot of people are praising him for across across the aisle. Well, Stephen, when we come back after the break, we'll talk a little bit about some other press reactions to this, but you brought up something I thought was really interesting. And so hopefully we can spend a little time talking about how Donald Trump's speech uh, last night will help him to actually accomplish some of these amazing, uh, amazingly optimistic uh, goals that he set out. Uh, this is CN Live on NRA TV. I'm guest host Bill Whittle, and we'll be back in just a few moments.